Hi there, in this chapter of Reading 101, I'm going to talk about playing techniques. When you play a pipe organ, the keys will respond differently than that of a suction reed organ. A pipe organ can do staccato notes easily and cleanly at any speed but many reed organs take a little more care to achieve the same quality. When you press the keys on a reed organ, you will need to have a firm touch right to the key bed. Never hammer the keys, especially if you have a sub bass. The mechanics are not meant to be hammered like a piano. They are meant to be open and closed. Always be gentle. Let's look at the sub bass mechanism when you are playing normally. Now look at the inside when you hammer the keys. Not only is it wearing out the mechanics, it will also create a knocking noise. The pallet valves hit the top of the bass cover. If your bass cover is missing, the pallet valves can overextend and stay open, creating a rather annoying effect. Due to the design of many reed organs, when a key is released, many of them tend to chatter. With these kinds of instruments, it is just as important to how you release the key as how you press it. Think of it like a door. Kids learn this at an early age. If you're going to quickly but quietly sneak some snacks out of the food pantry, you are not going to pull the door open and slam it when you are done. Mmm, I can use some of that. You will open it with control and close it quickly without the door handle ever leaving contact with your hand. The reed organ can contain 61 to, one to hundreds of these little tiny doors. The attack or the pressing of the key is obviously the easy part. The harder part is the release and the control of that. Depending on the organ, some of the pallet valves will be very weak and the key release will be even harder to control, but it can be done. This particular organ has weak pallet springs and the top rail felt is not lined up properly. Notice the chatter, but with a little attention to the release of the key, you can eliminate chatter on the weakest of pallet springs. When you release the note, don't let the key reach back to the top without any contact from your fingers. Just let your finger lead it back to the top and your chattering keyboard is kept in control. The time where you would not be able to control the chatter is when you are attempting a glissando. Now not all reed organs like glissandos being played on them and you would be hard pressed to find 100 year old reed organ music with a glissando in it. So I'll admit it may be historically incorrect to play them. But my rule has always been to make music and have fun. So here's how you can do them without hurting yourself or requiring bionic fingers. If your glissando is descending, the only prerequisite is a thumbnail. The longer, the better. You do not need to have the keys go to the bottom of the key bed. Just quickly glance across the top of the keys. First, do a small glissando at the top octave of your organ and just barely press down. In case your keyboard has been painted at some point or has soft keys, you may want to inspect if you are causing any scratches before going any further. As you glissando across the keys, have a sharp angle but avoid getting your thumb knuckle in the way. Go lightly and quickly. The listener will not notice if you did not sound the whole key or all the notes, even if the couplers are on. The same rule applies to ascending glissandos. I always prefer to use my index finger. I always find these a little more challenging than descending. But the key is to be light and fast, and you will always have a successful glissando. The sub bass to many people is a mechanical wonder because it can deliver a deep 16 foot pitch from a box just several inches high. When your reed organ is equipped with a sub bass, there is a whole new level of accompaniment available to you. Generally when the sub bass stop is pulled, you would only play one note at a time on this rank. This organ's sub bass is only 13 notes from C to C. 
For sound variations, you can use the bass side for melody and accompaniment, but just don't add the sub bass, as more than one note will make it sound muddy. However, there are times where you can have multiple notes on the sub bass rank, as long as you provide very light wind on the reservoir. I'm going to play an example of Bach's Come Sweet Death, where I play the C, the G, and the C, three notes, at the same time, even before the wind is provided. Slowly start pedaling, and the dark, mournful effect begins to take shape. As the wind pressure increases, and just before the bass begins to sound distorted, slowly lift off the G, and let the chords flow. You can also use a combination of fifths with the sub bass within your music. I prefer to use it at the end of the chosen piece. Ending with the fifth makes your bass sound even deeper, but I feel it works best with light wind pressure as you decrescendo. You can do this if you do not have a sub bass too. To provide a happy bouncy effect, use higher wind pressure and make sure the couplers are off. Sound the notes quickly and fully press them down without hammering them. When you provide the higher wind pressure, the sub bass reeds will respond much faster. This is another reason to have your ear assembly in good shape in order to provide the higher wind pressure when required. A reed organ can be clean sounding and fun with plenty of music that can be played on it. I hope these few tips can be helpful for your beginning studies. As you practice more, you will find your own techniques that will suit your taste. On the next episode of Reading 101, I'm going to talk about how to maximize the effects created by the Vox Humana and Forte. Until then, be creative, make music, and have fun. Thanks for watching.